Da -da -da -da. Hello everyone. Hello there Toby, how are you? I'm very good, how are you? Good, thank you. Good, good. good. Plodding along? Plodding? Oh. Yeah. Sun's out, sprinting along. Yeah, true actually. It's the Did one day in February that we get sun, so we're quite yeah. happy down here. Um, it's been a long time now since your last fixture. You looking forward to getting back out there, especially after pretty decent run before the break? Yeah, obviously we're excited about that. Uh, obviously it's, it's always difficult. Momentum in sport is a well-documented thing that everyone loves. Um, but to be honest, we were creaking a little bit. So although we have momentum, you know, we put a lot of effort into a, of the same players and especially when the international boys went as well. So actually, I think the break probably came at a good time from a physical point of view. And the challenge for us as a group is to regain that. And what was really good was to play the Blues fixture last Friday to give the boys that haven't played, you know, one minute of one game to, to actually move from being professional trainers to actually professional players. So, you know, that was great for us, uh, great for their mindset. Um, and obviously, there's a lot of sore bodies around that because they haven't a lot of these. Some of those boys hadn't played for 12 to 18 months. So, you know, from that point of view, I think it was it was certainly healthy for the uh, for them and for the organisation to to get some game time under everybody's belt. So, with regards to that game last Friday, is there anyone you think may feature in the coming weeks that particularly impressed you? Um, yeah, I think I, I think that the uh, the boys up front, the, the front row boys, were good. I thought uh, Reese Henry. That's the first time we've seen him in that. And I, I think the, the positive for us was if you look at the experience, the, the levels of experience in that fixture, you know, how much experience was on there for the Blues compared to what we had. We had a very, very young team out. And those front row boys, uh, you know, uh, Garen Phillips and, and those, or Dowie Lakes obviously had some exposure. And, and to see how they went, especially in the first half, we knew they would tail off. You know, but uh, to see how they went and the, and the energy they brought, you know, those boys stood out a little bit. And then there was a few senior boys that were, you know, dusting off the cobwebs. Ollie Cracknell went well, and 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 so on. And then obviously uh, Matthew Aubrey, for example. And then um, you know, it's good to see Luke Price out there and the youngsters around him. So yeah, it, it served a multitude of purposes for us. Good, good. Um, I know you said about you know freshening up during the break, um, but is it frustrating having a gap? when you seem to be gaining so much momentum. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it'd be it'd be great if you know, I think it's that double-edged sword. Yes, momentum, keep going, keep momentum going. You're most you're the most robust because winning winning, you know, gives you that self-belief and and uh, you know, everyone knows how it's well documented how important momentum is in sport. Um and but the caveat to it is if we want to compete at the same level consistently week in and week out, you need deep squads. And, uh, you know, by, I've, I've been on here before. Everyone knows how shallow, shall we, we are, especially in the international windows, and that's the biggest challenge. But not to shy away from that. We've got what we've got, and that's an opportunity. Whoever puts the Osprey's badge on their chest, you know, it requires a certain level of... of effort and intensity and be the best version that you can of you. You can't ask people to be better than what they are, but that's that's the challenge. That sort of squad depth versus momentum. Uh, Zebra this weekend, back at the Liberty. On paper, a win, but looking back, I can remember. <laughs> well, back. if you can predict the future, that's awesome. If you can tell me what the lottery numbers are on Friday, because there's a big jackpot, that'd be awesome. Just text me. I don't. I'm, I'm happy to share it. I'm happy to share it. I'll be happy to share it. Yeah, I mean, well, look, you know, looking at the form so far, I appreciate. Yeah, they, it was a bit of a shock victory for them when you travelled to Italy back in November, but. You know, you must be feeling pretty confident. I think this one I Saturday. think the Italian team, the like regions, everyone's talked about it. You know, I've heard a few podcasts around it. I think that they're very, they're much more competitive than before. If I'm honest, I look at the Benetton fixture here, for example, at St Helens, which was a landmark fixture for us. It was really tough. It took, except we won in the 78th minute. You know, we should have won over there in the 78th minute. So I just, I don't think anyone can take it for granted. The margins in professional sport, especially you know, uh, are very, very narrow. And, you know, a lack of concentration, a, a, sm a mindset shift, you know, and if anything, that fixture really created you know, an opportunity for us to remind ourselves why what things are really important because the first half in that was probably our worst half of, of rugby we've produced. So from that point of view, we couldn't, we gave ourselves a mountain to climb and couldn't climb it. 
So, you know, there's a lot of learnings. Every coach talks about learnings in, in seasons and in fixtures. I think there was a lot of learning in that. And the challenge for us is can they right the wrong of that? Because when we've started well and, and we know we finish well, everyone knows that we finish games well. If we start well and finish well, the reviews that we've been done, you know, we, we, we end up on the right side of the result a lot of the time. So ultimately it's about, you know, controlling us and making sure we put our best foot forward from the very first whistle. Let's hope the rain holds off then. Cheers, Toby. Thank you. Toby, it's Mark. It is Mark Orders. Hello, Mark. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a fair bit of weight on your on the shoulders of your young players that I'm coming up in the, the next few weeks. Yeah, for sure. I mean, as you said, we've got a lot of experience away and we picked up some injuries in that, in that area as well, the boys that have been away. Um, and yeah, it's a real, real challenge for us. But... We as a, as a group of understand that, that we're committed to the long term as well as the short term and part of the scar tissue you require to be an elite player means you have to learn on the job a little bit and we're prepared to take that risk because we believe that will serve us well as a group in the long term. We talk about squad depth, you've got two things, you can buy it or you can grow it. Now, we're in a the current COVID scenario for everybody means that, you know, pennies are hard to come by. So, you know, we, we were committed from the outset to grow our own and we're going to be even more committed to keep growing our own. So, yeah, this is a great opportunity for them to, uh, you know, to show how far down that track they are. How did uh, Dowie Lick go last week? He's probably playing in arguably the most competitive position in Welsh rugby, regional rugby. Okay for the Ospreys. Yeah, well, obviously, again, that's, I mean, there's a great example. He started exceptionally well. You know, we've highlighted specific things that he needs to work on. And for the first half against the Blues, which was his next opportunity to, to show a fire come, he was really, really good, you know, around his set piece work. So we were really pleased with that. Um, obviously, it's still an 80 minute performance. And he got a head knock at the end of it, actually. So he's, he, you know, he had a bit of HIA towards the end. But you know, we part of his growth is learning to be able to deliver it for 80 minutes in in a very competitive position. The one thing I love about Dow, he's a real competitor and and knows what it has, what he wants to do, and it's up to us and the coaching staff to guide him on what he needs to do. So, you know, there's definitely been signs of improvement, and as we talk about any player, but the youngsters in particular, the rate of improvement and there's signs of improvement. We only know if we see it out on the pitch. And that gives them the confidence and also me the confidence to pick them. I guess you're pretty pleased with the efforts of your boys in the Six Nations. If we just look at two of them, uh, Adam Beard and Owen Watkin, how, how did you feel that those guys sort of, how, how do you feel those guys have been faring? Well, I thought Beardy was very good at the weekend. Um, I thought that, I, I think probably the big picture for Adam is, is the fact that We've worked hard on him since he was omitted in the autumn or the, in the November series. Um, and we've really drilled into what makes him an international rugby player. Uh, and he's, as I said about the youngsters, he's delivered that on the pitch consistently for us, which means that he's going to be in with a shout. So I think he should take a lot of, uh, a lot of praise uh, for addressing what he was asked to address. And ultimately that's got him back in the team. And, you know, he, he was very physical. You know, obviously, he, he, you know, we're, we're playing an attractive style of rugby and you saw his pass for the try and bits and pieces like that. But ultimately, he, you know, he needs to bring a physical edge to the game. And I thought he did that very well last week. Owen Watkins, slightly different, um, you know, in and out. Um, he's been waiting for his opportunity. He, had, he could quite easily have got disgruntled around um, George being picked in his place, uh, but Ultimately, you can only be ready. We talk about players need to be ready, and I thought, you know, you saw his try-saving tackle, you saw his influence on the game. You know, that bodes well for us at the Ospreys, but also for Wales. With uh, Adam, how much potential do you feel he has, Toby? Can he realistically target a lion spot, perhaps? Well, his performances will will decide that. I think that. Uh, you know, I'm not going to sit here and give you the headline that Adam Beard should be a lion for sure. Adam Beard will decide that. Um, you know, his his scenario is around delivering consistent performances at high level. He's got a lot of potential to grow even bigger. I mean, I mean, I know he's big, but like as in bigger in relation to his presence in the game. 
but for example his his line out calling is something that we've worked a lot on and how he how he constructs a line out attack uh you know off field preparation consistency and physical elements and understanding his own game to a greater degree so he can really pinpoint on the impactful moments that at any level especially test level can make the big difference yeah and you appointed as a region Corin palmer this week i did could you say a few words about him what, what will he be doing and what kind of character is he well i mean i'm sure that the uh the Welsh public will be going. Um, okay, where is what? You know, what's the connection? There is a connection to Wales. I hasten to add. So he, he's formerly of Richmond and played with Alan Bateman and um, uh, the Quinell boys and Barry Williams, for example. So that's your Welsh connection if you if you want one to make it make to make one. But uh, you know, I've worked with Corin previously. In, in uh, we started out in professional rugby together, um, and the modern player and the modern performances require. Uh, elite performance both on and off the pitch and the more I'm dragged away from the performance on the pitch the more I'm not servicing the players the mindsets and the and the skill acquisition side the on-field performance side Corin's been appointed to help us um, maintain elite performance off the pitch and keep basically people doing the things that they're very best at and that's the exciting thing about it um, he has a wealth of experience. He's, you know, been in charge of elite performance from Premier Rugby, um, as well as different functional roles in, in management. And as a result, I think it's a real great acquisition for us to allow us to keep doing the main things, keeping the main things, the main things for our for our respective roles. So, he, you know, he's effectively a person that's going to glue a lot of the stuff together. Hi, Toby. Um, just touching on on Corin again. Is it effectively a move to sort of like you touched on it slightly? Just to sort of allow you to focus on on the coaching aspect and does that just make it a better unit off off the field ultimately? Yeah, I think so. I think it allows us to be consistent. Everyone talks about consistency and it's, you know, when you've got a lot of, and we've got some great people here, some, some people that are really energised about their job. But with all great people that have great work ethics, if you start concentrating and spread yourself too thinly, you become ineffective. That's the same in, in, in any walk of life. So if we can keep people doing five things exceptionally well rather than seven things not quite as well, then that's going to make us more elite performing. And, you know, you don't know those little cracks and those little bits and pieces can be distractions. So I think from that point of view, it's just about trying to get elite performance off the pitch as well as on it. And the players that are in a high-performing environment that allow them to, as I always talk about, improve and compete to the best of their ability week in and week out. And, you know, that's a very easy comment to throw out there. But um, I think that people who have proven track records, you know, and capability, we want to develop our own, of course, but in certain key positions, you have to be the finished product. You know, you, you, can't, win a, you can't win a campaign, OK, with you know certain positions you know an academy tight head for example it's just not going to happen yesterday eventually though you want them to grow in to be that market leader but ultimately you need to show them the way and people don't know what they don't know so if we can if we can help everyone be great at what they do and improve what they do and be efficient in what they do on and off the pitch then we're moving forward quicker and it is like a, the next piece in the jigsaw, isn't it, to sort of bring Ospreys back to where they should be? Yeah, again, uh, yeah, that's definitely part of it for me. Um, you know, uh, we're uh, different options. There's uh, there's only so many pennies to go around on and off the pitch. You know, it was a strategic decision by myself that I'd spoken to to uh, to James, the the owner, about uh, along with um, Andrew Millwood and whatever. There was a strategic element to it, and you know, we looked at we we need to invest into. You know our capabilities right across the across the piece. So, you know when we can do that, and when financials allow us to do that, then you know it's important that we move forward both on and off the pitch. And sometimes you do just need a rest, don't you? And do you think as though the, this rest that you've had could ultimately prove beneficial, considering you know, like uh, many coaches will have spoken about in different sports, it's a season like no other. So sometimes yeah. it's just good to have a little break, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I think even mentally it's important. But you know, if you think about what we're going into, you know, zebra, ulster, dragons, 
Leinster, etc., into Europe, you know, they're going to come thick and fast. So it's going to it's going to load up pretty pretty soon. Uh, so yeah, I just think it, you know we we try and section and block out parts of the season. This is a natural block for us. We've spent the last couple of weeks getting physically ready, but also honing some of the stuff that we want to improve as a team, not just against opposition. So it provides an opportunity for improvement. And if you improve the individual, you improve the team. Any thoughts on... Sorry. 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 Yeah, um, go for it. All right, cheers, mate. Um, and obviously, last one from me. Um, obviously, touched on the defeat over in Italy um, earlier in the season. Um, and you said earlier that that first half performance was probably one of your worst this season. Ultimately, when you come out of this next 80 minutes, if you've got a good win... Um, Will that obviously just show how far you've progressed between those two games and sort of like act as a bit of a barometer within the season? Yeah, potentially. I mean, we'll wait to see what happens. Um, it potentially do that. I'm more in interested in the cultural and mindset shift that you know because I think they're a basis of any performance, and that's where consistency is drawn from. So. I think we can always interrogate any one-off performance, whether it be six months ago, six years ago, six minutes ago. But ultimately, it's about where we are on the journey and the ups and the downs. Uh, you know, everyone talks about, oh, you lost the game in the 78th minute. Well, actually, it was the 30 minutes from minute 10 to minute 34, for example, where, you know, we didn't win a collision, we didn't whatever. So it's very easy to get drawn into the, the if you like, the symptoms of it. I didn't, the challenge is to get to the root cause of why we're doing it. and and that for me, you know, nine times out of ten starts with the mindset of the, of, of the team, and uh, you know we learnt a lesson there, and um, that lesson will come back. It always does. Um, you know, everyone's happy to be a, a, a what's the phrase I use? A happy underdog over an expectant favourite because it's it has less expectation, and expectation. Is a tough mother to serve for sure. So you know that's part of the growth of this as a whole group. Uh, you know, and if we're talking about being a favourite every week, we've probably come quite a long way. Can I just ask you a very quick one on George North? I appreciate we're, we're over a week away, perhaps from what could be as a hundredth cap for Wales. Can I just get a quick word from you? One, obviously, the sort of player that he is and what it's been like to work with him. Yeah, I mean, George is, uh, George is a bit of an energiser, uh, an energiser bunny. If he's happy, he plays well. So from my point of view, you know, I spend most of my time trying to make George smile. And, uh, and uh, you know, I think that that's important because that's how he, how he plays and wants to influence the game positively. And he's a positive guy. So uh, I think that, you know, what each individual, we talked about mentality there. I think that if you can get his mental right, he, he can influence the game. You've seen that yourself for, from a Welsh point of view. If if anyone was here at the Benetton game, we talked about it earlier. You know, he, he destroyed he destroyed the game. He scores tries that people can't treat. He's got that game breaking ability. So, I think that that those things are few and far between in players. And if you've got that sort of talent, you know, you need to nurture it the best you can. So. The fact that he's going to get 100 caps playing for his country in a tier one nation doesn't come for free. You know, it comes with effort and talent and understanding what you are and delivering consistently. So when that happens, we'll be uh, cheering him on from here, obviously, and supporting him. But it's great to see because he's, he's certainly a very uh, talented and influential player for sure. Great stuff. Thanks, Toby. Toby, yes, yeah, the last one it is from me. Um, you've, you've had a lot of uh, experience stripped from your side this week. Uh, who's going to be your captain? Reese Webb is going to be my captain. All right. right. Um, and he has been uh, exemplary in, in how he's conducted himself and driven the team around, uh, both since uh, his exclusion from Wales. So in the Connell game, he was he was very, very good in the week and in his performance. And that's continued since he's been here and he's focused on what he can control. Uh, and I'm excited about that because, uh, you know, through adversity, you, you find out about people. So I'm really I'm really pleased to see him and, and give him the uh, the armband for this week. And, you know, he's, he, he's embraced that full on. Do you think he'd play for Wales again, Torby? I hope so. You know, that's not my decision. My my decision is to get him, as with Adam Beard, as with Nicky Smith, as with Owen Watkin, as with them all, in the best position to, to to stake a claim. So if we're playing well as a team, then his chances will increase. Thank you. 